So what do I mean by changing the order of integration? So when we, when we look at a double integral, the way we calculate it is using the theorem on writing it as iterated integrals. And in principle, there are two potential ways of writing it. So let's start with a very simple case of the rectangle. So the theorem said the following. Uh, let f be continuous on a rectangle, so let's write AB times CD, then, and the theorem said, the double integral of F over the domain D, this is D, D is the rectangle, FXY dx dy equals the integral from a to b of the integral from c to d of fxy dy dx. That was the theorem, the, the baby version of iterated integrals on a rectangle. Do you agree? But for the same price, this integral equals I can first do the integral from c to d dy, first I mean outside, and inside integrate from a to b dx of fxy. Do you agree? So what happened here is that I changed the order of the snakes. Of course, each snake comes with its d something. What happened here is the changing the order of the snakes. Do you agree? Okay. And just taking a different perspective on this same theorem, forget about this. The theorem tells you that integrating from a to b dx of the integral from c to d dy, or vice versa, you get the same answer. Okay. So this is called this is called um, Fubini's theorem. Fubini theorem, and it's just a different perspective on the same theorem, okay, clear? And when you have a rectangle, it's actually pretty boring, because <coughs> usually both calculations are going to be just as simple, but you can change the order of integration in more general settings. For example, when your domain is simple with respect to both directions, or when you can break it into simple domains with respect to both directions, and I want to express that via examples. Okay, so um, we can change we can change the order of integration, the order of the snakes. in more general settings um, but we have to do it uh, carefully with care with caution let's do examples so here's the first example um, I want to calculate something we did previously. So it's an example we calculated in the previous clip. And what it was, tell me if you recognize it, it was this thing. So this was 4, this was 0, this is x, this is y. Let's write y a bit, yuck, a bit higher up. And this was y equals x, and this was, sorry, this was y equals x, and this was y equals x over 2, and our domain was this. Do you remember this example? And the function that we had was the function fxy was x cubed plus y cubed. And the way we calculated it was, so, uh, uh, we calculated 
I'm not going to do the calculation again. Calculated the, the double integral of f on this domain d as the integral from 0 to 4 dx of the integral from x over 2 to x dy of the function. And what we got, let me just remind you what the answer was, it was 752 over 5. Do you agree? Remember this? Okay. Can I do it the other way? Can I change the order of integration? Can I write the integral dx on the inside and the integral dy on the outer side? And the answer is obviously yes. I can look at this domain now instead of like this, like we did previously, I can look at it as simple with respect to the other direction. Okay. So alternatively, alternatively, the same integral equals the integral. So what are going to be the bounds on y now? What's this going to be? It's going to be 4 again, because this is y equals x. Do you agree? So it's going to be the integral from, let's write, the double integral over d of f equals the integral from 0 to 4 dy, and it's a different 4, it's this 4, not this 4, okay, of dy of the integral from what to what dx. So now I'm looking from the bottom function, which is y, over, y equals x, but I'm going to write it x equals y. Do you agree? That's the bottom now, right? Do you agree that for a fixed y, I'm going from this function, which is x equals y, all the way up to this function, which is x equals 2y. Do you see that? So from x equals y to x equals 2y, of the function x cubed plus y cubed dx. Is this correct? Does everybody agree that this is correct? Okay, so try calculating it and you're going to see that it's wrong. Something is incorrect. I fooled you. Na, 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 na. What's wrong? Tell me if you can see what's wrong. It looks right. Nope. Because you need to break it up. Very good. Very good. Very good. It is true that for this y, I go between x equals y and x equals 2y. That is true. But it's not true for this y, for example. In this y, I go from x equals y to x equals 4. Do you agree? So this domain, it is, it is a simple domain, but the, bo the bottom function is x equals y, but the top function, or the right function, is not just this function x equals 2y, but rather it's this function, which I'm going to bold in red, it's this function, and then from here, it's this function. This is the right end function of the domain when regarding it as a domain from where the y's vary between, where the x's varies between two functions of y. Do you agree? So if I want to calculate it as an iterated integral in this case, this is wrong. This is not true. And if you calculate it, you're not going to get 752 over 5. It's wrong. This would be if you would allow this to continue all the way over to, um, uh, to y equals 4. Okay? It's not this domain. So what I need to do, this is true when I replace this by 2. When the y's range from 0 to 2, that's this point. This is where y equals x over 2 crosses x equals 4. So this is a 2. From 0 to 2, it's indeed this integral. 
Do you agree? Plus, when the y's range from 2 to 4, when the y's range from 2 to 4, the x's range the x's range from the bottom is still x equals y, but the top is just x equals 4 of the same function. Is it clear what just happened here? Everybody? Think for a minute and tell me if you agree. And this, this is going to come out 752 over 5. I'm not going to calculate it for you. It's pretty boring. It's the same function and the derivatives, the antiderivatives are obvious. And, and, but please do the calculation. Okay, I know how to do it. I did a few of these. I'm already um, feel, feeling comfortable with things like this. But you should practice. Do it. Okay? Good questions? The, the important thing is to understand what happened here. Why what was written before was simply wrong. Was simply not, uh, didn't correspond to that domain. Clear? Do you want me to say it again? You look... No, I was, just, I was confused. I just worked it out. Why you started x equals y at the bottom of the stack and then x equals 2y at the top of the stack. Right, because I'm going, the, the top and bottom now correspond when I'm looking at it like this. And I hope that answers whoever asked me a, a couple of clips ago why I draw these arrows. Do you understand now why I draw these arrows? Okay, did, did, did I answer that eventually? So top and bottom, or sorry, bottom and top now correspond to left and right in this case. The left is x equals y, the right is x equals 2y whenever the y's are between 0 and 2, and then the left equals uh, x equals y, and the right is x equals 4 for, x's that, for y's that range between 2 and 4. Clear? Okay. So, um, do this. Do this and see that you get exactly the same uh, answer. Okay. Um, I want to do another example which is more intriguing, um, but still follows the same idea of changing order of integration. So here's the integral that I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at the, the following integral. The integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 1 minus the root of 1 minus y of some function, fxy, dx, dy. Not done. Plus, the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 1 plus the root of 1 minus y to the root of 4 minus y squared of the same function, fxy, dx, dy. Not done. Plus, the integral from 1 to 2 of the integral from 0 to the root of 4 minus y squared of same function, fxy, dx, dy. Are you done? I'm done. <laughs> okay, so, done. So, obviously we can't calculate this because we don't know what f is, okay? You, you could plug in an f and ask calculate, but what I want to do is change the order of integration. Obviously there is some domain here, some domain here, which we still have to decipher, okay? It's not evident exactly what the domain is. We're, it's not hard, but we're, it requires some some calculation, some understanding of what it is. We're going to do it. And I want to reverse the order of integration. So instead of integrating dx and then dy, I want to integrate dy and then dx. Okay? So let's understand what this domain is. So 
Before, in order to do that, the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully write, so note that the inner integral is dx, so I'm going to write here x equals 0 to x equals this, right? That's, the, that's what I really want to do, right? And I'm going to do it here as well, x equals this to x equals this, and x equals 0 to x equals this. This is what I'm actually calculating here, right? So let's try to understand what the domain is. I know how to understand graphs of functions when they're given as y equals a function of x. That's the functions I've been taught to deal with ever since, I don't know, middle school, right? And these are functions that look like x equals some function of y. That confuses me, OK? So let's, well, I, I, can, I can deal with x equals 0. That is OK. I know what that is, right? That's the y-axis. But what is x equals 1 minus root of 1 minus y? I don't know what that looks like. So let's figure it out. So x equals 1 minus the root of 1 minus y is what? Let's rewrite it as, let's move this to the other side. So I get the root of 1 minus y, and no minus, equals 1 minus x. Do you agree that this is the same thing? Okay, I want to solve it for y. I want to write it as y equals a function of x. I'm going to square both sides, so I get 1 minus y equals 1 minus x squared. Do you agree? And so y itself, I'm going to throw it to the other side or change the sign. y itself equals 1 minus 1 minus x squared. And now I can open this up. I can already see that this is going to be just a quadratic function. It's some parabola. Do you see that? And what is it more precisely? Well, there's a minus x squared. It's going to be a crying parabola. And then there's a minus 2x with another minus, so plus 2x. And then there's a minus 1 plus 1. So it's just this. It's minus x squared plus 2x. That's the function. Do you agree? I can, in fact, rewrite this. If I want to, I can pull an x out. So I can write it um, minus x times x minus 2. Same thing. Okay. I know how to draw this. This is a function I recognize. Um, so minus x squared plus 2x. It's a parabola. It's a crying parabola. Right. The, the a is negative. And it, it has roots at 0 and at 2. Do you agree? So I know how to draw it. I want to do the drawing on a different board, OK? Because I want to come back here and do some more calculations. So here's the drawing. It has roots at 0 and at 2. So this is 0, 1, 2. And it's a crying parabola. And I can find the, the vertex. The vertex is where uh, b over, minus b over 2a, was it, right? Mm -hmm. Help me. Uh, two, so it's at 1. Do you agree? So the vertex is going to be at 1. And what's the value at the vertex? It's minus 1 plus 2. So it's also going to be 1. So it's going to be here. So it's a parabola that looks like, maybe let's take a different color, it's a parabola that looks like this. Do you agree that this is the function? Good? Everybody agree? What, you don't like my parabola? No? Thank you. OK, then, then uh, what? You want me to make it more beautiful parabola? Even this blue, which, which started out as blue and faded, and then a touch of black and orange from previously, and it's a nice, beautiful turquoise now. OK, parabola, good. Um, what am I looking at? Remember that I, I, I squared something here, so squaring is, 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 is dangerous because you introduce more solutions. So let's look 
So, so this, is, this is true that this is the function y equals, I think we said bi to this blue previously, I don't know why I'm using it again. This is y equals minus x squared plus 2x, but this came from, originally, it was x equals 1 minus the root of 1 minus y, okay? So it's not going to be the entire parabola, because when I squared it, I got the two branches. It was a function. x was a function of y, and that thing is obviously not a function of y, right? x is not a function of y there. Do you agree? Let's look at it again. I'm sorry for jumping between the boards. If I look at it like this, it's not a function of y. For every y, I have two x values, right? So it was either this branch or this branch. Which one was it? x equals 1 minus something, minus the root of 1 minus y squared. So it's x equals 1 minus something. It's this branch. Do you agree? So this, only this half, only this, the red half, is what I was looking at originally. x equals 1 minus the root of 1 minus y. Does everybody agree? I'm not going to erase the other half because it's going to show up. So let's see what the other half is. So I just deciphered this thing. Let's decipher now this thing. So x equals 1 plus the root of 1 minus y. This is the same as the root of 1 minus y equals 1 minus x. When I square it, I get precisely this. Do you see that? So when I square this, I'm going to continue from here. I'm going to get the same function. But now it's the other branch. It's x equals 1 plus something. Do you agree? Okay, so this is in fact the other half of that parabola. So let's go back here. This blue half, um, this blue half is x equals 1 plus the root of 1 minus y. Good? Everybody? Okay, let's see if we deciphered everything. No, there's still this x equals the root of 4 minus y squared. Let's decipher that. 4 minus y squared. So again, I'm going to square. So x squared equals 4 minus y squared. So x squared plus y squared equals 4. What's this? This is a circle of radius 2. Do you agree? Okay, centered where? At the origin. So the graph of this thing, so these are two, these are the three different uh, functions of x that appear there. So x squared plus y squared equals 4, back to our drawing, is a circle of radius 2 centered at the origin. Uh, so here is 1 and here is 2, and it's a circle of radius 2 centered at the origin. So it's something like this. It continues here, and in fact, it continues here as well. Okay? Do you agree? Okay, so now I know all three functions that appear there, and there's also the function x equals 0, which is the y-axis, right? x equals 0. So this is, this is uh, x equals the root of 4 minus y squared. This, I'm only, uh, so the circle is not a graph of a function, <coughs> not a graph of x as a function of y or y as a function of x. This is, and this is only the positive x's. So in fact, this thing is this half circle, the, the right half circle without this. Do you agree? x equals 4 minus y squared is only the right half circle. Good? Okay, so didn't come out circleish.
Okay. So, what's the domain? So the first domain, there were three integrals there. The first domain was the y's were between 0 and 1. This is y, this is x. Let's again look at the integral. The y's in the first integral are between 0 and 1. And the x's are between 0 and this function. The y's are between 0 and 1. And the x's are between 0 and this function, the red. So the first, the domain of the first integral is this thing. Do you agree that this is the domain of the first integral? y is between 0 and 1. For every y, the x is between 0 and the red function, which was this. Does everybody see that? Good. What's the domain of the second integral? Let's look again at this board. Ami, I apologize for moving back and forth. In this integral, the y's are still between 0 and 1. For each fixed y, the x's are between this function, which was the second branch of the parabola, and the circle. Let's look again at our drawing. The y's are still between 0 and 1. For each fixed y, the x's are between the other branch of the parabola and the circle. So the domain of the second integral is this thing. Looking at it from left to right, like this. Do you agree? And finally, the third integral, again at this board, the y's are between 1 and 2 now, and for each fixed y, the x's are between 0 and the circle. The y's between 1 and 2, for each y, the x is between 0 and the circle. Back here, the y's are between 1 and 2. The x's are between x equal 0 and the circle. Isn't it hilarious? I just dropped my marker. That was so funny. OK. Do you agree that that's the domain of the third integral? Okay. And since I'm looking at the same function f, what I was calculating originally is the integral of f, the double integral of f, whose graph lies up here somewhere. I don't know what f is. It's not even prescribed explicitly. It's just abstract. f over this entire domain. And I decided to break the domain in order to make it a simple domain. When I look at it like this, I broke it into three subdomains. This one, this one, and this one, and each one is simple. Do you agree? Can I write it as an integral changing the order? Can I integrate like this? Can I put the integral, this blue is, did the integral from something to something dx and inside write the integral from something to something and we'll figure out the somethings in a minute dy of fxy can i write it like this answer i can and in fact this entire domain is simple as is it's much easier to write when i change the order of integration do you agree? What would it be as a domain where the x's are restricted between two fixed constants and the y's are between two fixed functions, the x's range from 0 to 2, from 0 to 2 dx, and for each fixed x, I go from this function, which was y equals minus x squared plus 2x, to the circle. Writing the circle, y equals a function of x, it's y equals the root of 4 minus x squared. So this single expression, which is a single double integral, that, that sounds funny, a single double integral, but anyway, this 
single double integral equals the sum of those three double integrals that I had on the previous board. Does everybody agree? Is it clear? Okay, so changing the order of integration, and I, I, I intentionally drew the lines uh, like this, so it doesn't suggest the directionality. The same domain, this entire domain D, which is this entire thing, I can write like this as one double integral. If I want to write it like this, it's not one double integral because it's not simple. If you try to go along this x here, you go into the domain, out of the domain, and into the domain again. Can't do that. It's not simple. So you have to break it into three subdomains. This chunk, this chunk, and this chunk, and that's that expression over there. Okay? This is not difficult stuff. Okay, I don't think we did anything too sophisticated here, but it does take a bit of practice, okay, to get used to deciphering the, these things and the, the correspondence between the, the algebraic expressions and the actual drawing of the domain, the, the geometric picture, and only like that can you do the change of variables. You can't just look at it and somehow magically change the variables. You have to understand what the domain is and then it becomes obvious. Okay, so you have to go through that intermediate step of understanding what the picture of D is. Clear? Okay, so if I would ask you now, for example, what is the area of D? How could you solve it? For example? Right, take the function, plug a 1 here, and calculate this double integral. Do you agree? That would be the hard way of answering this question, obviously. Okay, the, the, easy, the easier way of answering this question would be using Calc 1 tools, right? It's one-fourth the area of the circle minus the integral from 0 to 2 of a parabola. That would give the same answer, the area of D, but that would be not using Calc 2, okay? So, homework, try it, try it, um, find the area of D using fxy equals 1 in this, okay, and it seems like it's going to be a very easy integral. Uh, the, the little tricky thing is when you... S here is going to be a 1. The antiderivative is going to be y, so it's just going to be this minus this dx. This is still easy. This thing, okay, finding the antiderivative of this might require a bit of work. Or you can say, well, this is half a circle. I know the area, right? The in integral is the area under the graph. You can do it then, but... Make sure you, you understand, make sure you understand what I want, what I'm asking you to do here, and why this is the area of D. Okay? Okay, so, um, this kind of uh, uh, completes the examples I wanted to give you on changing the order of integration. You, you can see that it's not a totally trivial business, okay? You have to, it requires some thought. The next thing I want to do is not change the order of integration, but do what's called change of variables, okay? You did that in Calc 1, that was substitution, right? You moved from X's to T's, right? Did you use T? I don't know, some people use U, okay. So we want to do it now for integrals of two variable functions. How do we do change of variables? What does change of variables mean? That's coming up next.